Registration required of AR-15s in these proposals? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, certain models. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, for existing no, no. owners? That would be oh. all set me they, they don't believe in that. Well, no, we don't have anything in our I do. proposal. What about the Democrats? Y yes, they do. If you can't find it, don't worry about it. I'll just make a point. Did, did they use any statistics on this? I, you, you know me, I, I'm, I'm prolific. I write for Hold on, Bill. Hold papers. on. Yeah. Are you, are you set, yeah, sir? Let me the Firearms Owners Protection Act was signed on May 19, 1986 by Ronald Reagan. There can be no confiscation of weapons during a um, state of emergency. New Orleans already did that. Mm -hmm. There can be no registration in a state or the federal government of, of firearms. Look it up. I was born in 41. I am a computer Neanderthal. <laughs> I dug this thing up in five minutes by Googling it. Right? No registration in the federal government or the states and no confiscation during a state of emergency. I mean, these people have got to obey the law like we do. Read the damn Constitution and follow it. That's, I'm not saying that about you, I'm talking about everybody. But these people, Feinstein doesn't know a broomstick from a rifle. She doesn't know anything. She's just a far left Democrat. Well, we're not, we're not trying Rob, to... Rob, I, I just have one question. And this goes back to a few years ago. Had the lands had not killed himself, we don't have a death penalty in this state, which means we would have supported him probably for the rest of his life, maybe for 20 life sentences, and gone nowhere. I at the time, voted against yeah, that's I know you did. And at the time, Malloy pushed the uh, abolishment of the death penalty in this state and got it through the Democrats. And I guess my question is, Democrats. pardon? Not this Democrat. Thank you. And I guess my question is, is there any more thought to going back? Because the majority of the people, if I recall at that time, did want to continue to have a death penalty. 63%. And yet, 63%. Yeah. Is there any thought, you want to react to something, is there any thought of going back now because of what happened here, to go back and say, we should reinstitute a death penalty in Connecticut? That'll never happen. Never happened. The only thing for, for possession of AR-15s, that's the only thing they'll <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the financial part, we're not recreating the wheel here. You guys are small business owners. You don't run your business where you take in X and spend Y. This is not complicated. We take in X, we have this much in spending, we are left with this. Uh, what do you mean get people for the votes? I don't understand that. And I, guess, I think that's what everybody's having trouble understanding about everything. Well, you got to have... The truth is, three of us are mostly like-minded. Um, but that isn't true. You've got, what, 151 in the House, and we've got 36 in the Senate. You've got to count the votes. That's I, I understand, but yeah. well, who, who's not in favor for having a balanced approach to the way we run our yeah. government? Uh, let me just well, say uh, about, <laughs> um, about appropriation. 49%. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the people are in favor for that. And also doing it. it. Just the, 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 one thing, if I may, gentlemen, I apologize. The makers and the people. I, I would venture to say that the three of us will agree with the majority of the people in this room on 99% of the issues. Okay? What you need to do is when you go to work or when you talk to family members or co workers or whoever, and you go and you say, hey, Joe, you live in Danbury, or you're, sir, you, live, you work in Danbury. Hey, Joe, you work here. Who's your state representative? I'll bet you 10 bucks they that they don't know who it is. Okay? Secondly, they don't know who their state senator is either or whoever it is. Then they don't know how they vote. Right. Because what happens is you see us at the Girl Scout ceremonies or at the Memorial Day parade or I'm bringing your kid a citation. So, yeah, that's Rob King, what a nice guy. And then, then they go on. And I'm, I'm picking on myself, but I would get venture to say most of my votes would probably go along with what you adhere to or what this room adheres to. But people do not know who their legislator is, and nor do they hold them accountable for their votes. 
So if you want to change, if and, and, and to Joan's point, you got to have the votes. Mm -hmm. That's the only way it's going to happen. So, so would you be in favor of being held to a contract to say provide a balanced budget, right do what the people We're, want? We are, we are constitutionally required to have a balanced budget. I understand that, but somehow that sidesteps everybody, and, and and that's our point as far as on guns. We break the Constitution every day, not on just guns, on other things, and. The people are starting to wake up. We're here. The people, I mean, you've never had this many people in a meeting like this before. You, we've had people at the Capitol on both sides. With the, with the woman over here who said, yeah, I'm a little afraid. You know, we need to come together because we can't ask you to be across the aisle if we, the citizens, are divided. Mm -hmm. But we cannot be divided. Our, the State of the Union address to me was... It was dividing the, the country, the rich and the poor, the middle class and this. It, it, was, it was class warfare. See, That's I'm, not what we I'm need. I'm glad you're bringing that up because as an elected official come election time, the special interest is out there in force. Our opponents will have 10 people at the poll that are volunteering for them coming from all over the state of Connecticut. And we're doing family and friends, whoever you can muster up. Right. Thank you. So when I first started in the House and Senator Hartley was the representative there, there was a real balance in the House of moderate Democrats and, and Republicans. Right. And we had a conservative governor. So a lot of things got done. The makeup of the House, out of 151 members, we're lucky if we have nine or ten moderate Democrats that are willing to stand up. And they're so minute in number that they just go with the majority. And, and I think that's and it's what we're not saying. done by accident. The special interests have put their people in, and they're never going to get out. And like what Rob said, if the public's not educated, you see a friendly face, you're going to vote for him. Or if you see ten people at a polling place for someone, Hey, he's got to be a good guy. Well, people need to educate themselves. That's what, I mean. that's what I'm saying right now. I think that's the change in what this Sandy Hook is brought about. Because it's just not about guns. Well, I hope you're for, right. me, for me, it's not anyway. No. There's a whole there lot. Of, people should be more afraid of our deficit than any right. gun. Right. I, I, I don't disagree with you. Right. Right. You I should be scared right. to death of the, the way this country is heading fiscally. Yep. Because we are on a decline. And, and we're not keeping jobs here. We're becoming Greece. 